Welcome to the landscape photography lesson at the photography class at Hummies World. The landscape mode on your camera looks like uh, this icon right here. It's a little mountain with a cloud and um, sometimes it's a little bit different depending but they all have that little mountain shape of some kind on the camera. Now the landscape mode, the preset mode in your camera, it chooses a small aperture which is a large number that has a small hole and as you've learned in the recent lessons this is to provide a greater uh, deep depth of field and every one of the preset modes in your camera is actually as I described in the introduction video of this class it is actually um, to give a preset for an aperture or a shutter speed and sometimes a filter in your camera and so in this case the landscape mode applies to the aperture setting and so as we go through all of the presets in your or cameras, uh, the common ones, you're going to be able to learn how to do the manual mode for that particular type. A deep depth of field, if you remember from the previous lesson, is where everything is fo in focus. It, it, it's in focus deep and far into the distance. Everything including what is near in the foreground and what is far in the background. If using your aperture priority mode or the manual mode, choose a small aperture. Or, as we learned, aperture can be interchanged for the word hole. Small hole, small aperture, think large number. I'm going to give some tips now for taking some uh, landscape photos. Uh, there's not a whole lot to the camera settings except for the small aperture. So now we're going to look at some uh, tips. One thing with uh, horizon, uh, with landscape photos, is to look for a straight horizon. Here is a photo which we're going to be utilizing later um, to straighten it. I'm going to show you how to straighten the photos. Um, these lessons are, as I said, uh, to teach you how to take the right photos and if you don't take them right then we're going to learn how to fix them in Photoshop Elements. So this is actually the one we're going to use to uh, fix photos in a uh, future lesson. But you can see I drew a straight line there and you can see that the horizon is not straight. The horizon is where the land meets the sky and in this case it's actually where the people are at the bottom of the mountain. And so there's a less space here between my line and the horizon than there is here between the horizon. So this has a crooked horizon and here it is straightened and this is a better photo. However when you straighten a horizon you lose, you have to crop it down and you lose some of your image and detail around the edges. Um, so it's best to try to get that horizon straight when you're taking the photo, not to fix it afterwards, not say, oh, I could fix it afterwards, and then all of a sudden you're cutting off an important part of your photo um, when you're straightening the horizon. Now I do want to say, and I don't, I didn't put an example of that in here, but do you always have to have your horizon straight? No, in fact, sometimes some of the most artistic photos are of those with a crooked horizon. I should have put one in here. And 
um, but those are a lot of times done deliberately and on purpose and um, uh, sometimes they're done randomly um, I've even done one if you go into the photography group here in Hummies World um, I have one in there called shooting from the hip and I have a really cool one of a pumpkin uh, field where I took it from my hip and it ended up very slanted uh, horizon and it turned out so cool so um, in a case like this where we have horses you don't necessarily want your horses to be walking downhill when they're not walking downhill but in other cases where it doesn't matter um, putting that camera on an angle it can be cool so this is not a definite rule here is your horizon on the rule of third line so we have here a graphic um, with the rule of thirds graph and the horizon of course goes left to right so we're going to be focusing on these two lines sometimes we're going to be talking in the you'll see in the video um, about the intersection here is an intersection here is one there's four here and so where the lines intersect sometimes that's where you want to put your uh, focal point so here is an intersection if you put your horizon line on this intersection you're going to have more of the foreground and less of the background now often the background then would be your sky and so purposefully putting your horizon here is going to give you more attention to the foreground your foreground is going to become your focal point and not your sky if you move that down to the other horizon line you're going to have less in your foreground and more of your sky and so then your sky is going to become the focal point and you know there are sometimes some really cool photos of the sky especially um, well here's one I happened to take while I was out there um, in the video you're going to be watching and so um, here you know the sky is very powerful but the the uh, field in front is not um, of course depending on what you're taking a photo of you might have something else out there maybe a mountain and so then maybe what's in front of the mountain is not the focal point and then the mountain is going to be on the top and be the focal point look for a focal point you've already heard me say that about 20 times while we've been talking together here um, and you've heard me say it if you've taken course one or the other course course two and you've read my comments a lot of times in the gallery I'm always talking about focal point a lot of the things if if you haven't reviewed it go to um, my design principle and it's even in PDF in course one and read those I think there's eight maybe design principles because every one of them and applies to uh, photography and um, once you learn those in digital scrapbooking and how they affect it's going to also improve your photography um, and I think we're going to be covering that uh, near the end of this uh, class too foreground and background foreground or background as the focal point we just sort of went over that um, and so here is one where the background is more in uh, as the focal point and the focal point here is actually the barn and you notice I put the barn on the rule of thirds and so here is an example where what is in the background is more of the focal point and here is the exact same picture and you notice just because I lowered the camera um, and got less of the barn now the foreground is in is the focal point so your positioning changes everything so learning to have a that uh, eye the cameraman's eye 
um, I I always say it just it ever since I've learned to have that it has made my world it made me appreciate the world more um, I look at things as if I were looking at them through the camera and getting different views I could stand in one spot and see the world differently it is just hard to explain till you till till it hits you but uh, being a photographer does make you appreciate the world more because you see things differently is is there an object as the focal point um, sometimes you want the foreground or the background as the focal point sometimes you want the object as, as the focal point and in this case we were also in the first one having the barn as our focal point and in this case as you're gonna see in the the video later this tree I put it right here on the rule of thirds line and um, the tree was my focal point so even in landscape you can pick out something any little thing out in the distance and choose it as your focal point and try to put it on one of the rule of third lines lines to lead to the focal point this was a perfect spot for us to be taking photos to give a demonstration of this of course as you're going to hear in the video uh, it was oh it, we we drove around forever looking for this perfect spot to do videos and in a remote location where people wouldn't bother us and there wasn't a house around or a person around and then next thing we knew there was a car coming by and slowing down and uh, he actually parked a little ways off and watched us and then there was four ladies just came by walking by making noise in the middle of one of the videos I'm like what are these ladies doing walking on a country road and we just kept getting in and then and then we started over again and uh, then the tractor and combine came out it started working on the very field that we were filming oh we were cracking up laughing so hard anyway the lines are there lines to lead to the focal point so in this case I have this line where the the um, golden field matches the uh, other field and you can see it reads leads right to my focal point and so that was a perfect uh, setup um, to describe this so we do have a line we also have a line going straight across here where this field and that field match and then that takes us right into blocks of shape and color so use find a setting where you can have blocks of shapes of color in landscape because that's going to make it more interesting we have this kind of green here in this block we have this different kind of green or you know we could say blocks of texture also shape color and texture this is a green but it's a different texture then we have this block of golden and then we have the block of sky and so look for those in um, your landscape photos and use them is the object in the foreground of object in foreground for a sense of depth and size sometimes and I think a lot of you have picked up on this if you just move and allow whatever's near you to get into the camera um, it's going to give a sense of depth um, in your landscape and a sense of size uh, even just putting somebody's hand uh, there if you have nothing else sometimes can be cool uh, or a person part of a person or a pole sometimes I leave a pole purposefully on the edge of my photo anything so I this would normally be a very very boring landscape photo but because I moved over and allowed some weeds or grass or whatever that is uh, that were right where I was standing instead of moving out of them I moved and allowed part of them to be in the photo and now it gives depth it shows how uh, far away this row of trees is and here's another example we could have um, we were out uh, hiking in Hawaii 
and it took us forever to get to this beach. It was pretty scary to get down there too once we got to this point. But I could have moved to try to get a picture of the beach without this tree in the foreground, but having that tree gave it a sense of depth. You also can tell that we're up high, um, how far away the beach is, and a little bit about how big this area is, just because I left this tree in the foreground. So don't always try to get a clear view of everything. Um, leave that stuff there in the way. Take a hike and get to high vantage points. Oh, here was this another shot from that same hike in Hawaii. And because we were up higher, this uh, palm tree that I left in the foreground, you see I left all this in the foreground while trying to take a picture of the ocean, made it a much more interesting and much more in depth, um, especially having this one and then this one and then this tree all here to give depth and then the next layer is the lava rock and the next makes the ocean go out but because I was up higher it made for a much interest more interesting view so um, don't just stand there when you're out there at landscape photos look for something you can climb on and get up climb on your car if you think it's not gonna harm the hood um, I, a lot of times, you know what I do? All I do is put my hands above my head as far as I can and I snap a shot and I bring it down to see what I got because it's amazing what a different photo you can get just by raising your camera up. Use a filter. I don't own any filters but I want to. <laughs> But a filter, um, one of the most popular ones and one that they say is really necessary for um, uh, landscape photography is the polarizing filters uh, because they darken the sky and saturate the colors. Now for me, I guess I have not been pushed to get a polarizing filter uh, because um, I fix it in Photoshop. <laughs> we all know how we could saturate colors in Photoshop and make them vivid and vibrant, which is going to be another lesson coming up here. But if you use a polarizing filter, you can get that effect straight out of your camera instead of fixing it afterwards. So those that are uh, professional photographers who, who don't believe in photo, using Photoshop to fix photos and believe that it's best to get your perfect photo straight out of the camera to say, hey, this came straight out of my camera. Um, a lot of times people brag about that. Yep, I didn't fix it. You know, I, this I'm good. I could get it straight out of my camera, they say. Um, often those are peop the people who uh, don't know how to fix their photos in Photoshop well, so they break about their, anyway, we won't go there. But a polarizing filter, or any of the filters, looks like this. It's just simply a ring that you screw onto the end of your um, uh, lens. And uh, I don't think they're all too expensive. Um, I need to pick me up one. I know there's a local store that has one. I've heard the name brand Hoya, H-O-Y-A, I think is a good brand name. And I, I just, I do have one, uh, but I don't think it's a polarizing filter. It's just a protective one of some kind to help protect my lens. And another kind of filter that you can get is a graduated gray or it's called neutral density filter and it it's kind of like a gradient in your Photoshop elements for for those who are familiar with uh, um, the Photoshop uh, it darkens the sky and reduces the contrast between the landscape and the sky but you know I could apply a gradient afterwards and get the same effect I'm sorry <gasps> um, that's why I'm so lazy at learning photography because <laughs> I can always do it in my Photoshop later. 
color correction filters change the color of the light on the landscape so you can pick up a variety and you know if you've got your tripod set up getting ready to take a landscape photo uh, and you've got plenty of time to be switching out filters to play um, playing is fun yes so let's watch the movie and this first movie of course is using um, my uh, DSLR and um, it, you can't see the you can't see it very well there was a glare on the camera but hopefully you, I think you can get the idea here we are out on a country road we went driving out to find a quiet setting with um, an interesting landscape and um, we've had nothing but cars and people walking and now a tractor has decided to uh, come along and uh, do the field that we were just photographing. But anyway, this was the perfect spot for a few minutes till we got the camera rolling because of the uh, differences. We have the green and then we have the golden brown from the corn back there which the tractor is working on. Uh, that makes a great contrast in the photo. Um, we have a horizon, we have hills, we have lots of little focal points. I've been having a blast out here um, with uh, already photographing because there's trees and other things that I can uh, make a focal point in my photo. Um, let's quickly review the settings for uh, landscape photography in uh, this. Uh, camera and we're starting on a program mode and if I hold down the shutter button we can see it has an aperture of 16 so we know that the default aperture um, that it works with is 16 um, remember 16 is a fairly large number so that's going to be a fairly small hole the smaller the hole the higher uh, the sharpness of the entire image and so we want to stick around there maybe a little bit higher to get um, great landscape photography. So I'm going, there's a tree right here, so I'm going to use that as my focal point. And this is the horizon line. So I'm going to put my photo on the horizon. Now you either want the one-third at the top for the horizon or a one-third line at the bottom. So you want to choose, do you want more sky or do you want more of this? And then you would take the photo but this is program mode so we need to get off of that and onto the aperture priority mode the AV and turn that live view back on and we'll put that tree right there on where the intersection is of the rule of thirds and right now I'm on 22 which is higher than that 16 and I'm going to take that photo. Now I might um, try taking it at other apertures. Um, there's 18 and you know when I get home then I can uh, see which one of these I like better. Um, I can go all the way up. Well, up to 22 is the highest. So we want to open that up really wide. I can take a 14 just to see. Now this is your um, digital DSLR and how you would get most things in focus. Uh, but for um, this camera and some of the other cameras, uh, the point and shoots, you might have a landscape mode and this one actually does if you get out of the creative modes and it looks like a little mountain and this is going to um, figure all of the settings for me and um, I can't really take a photo here because I can't get up to look in the hole the live viewing does not work in these modes but I can tell you when I was testing in here it was giving me an aperture around 10 but you can use that as a dummy mode for landscaping La landscape is going to give you a larger aperture, um, probably an average aperture for most landscape photos, 
and it um, is going to do all the work for you. And uh, I should mention now, um, as we look, maybe I'm gonna get take this camera here and actually look out here in, in our field. And there's like a barn over here. And if I zoom out, this would be a landscape photo. And I would put that barn maybe on oops, the rule of thirds line. Maybe zoom in a little bit since it's got the tractor in there. And that might be a great shot um, right there. It's a combine, not a tractor, I'm told. <laughs> And uh, there's all sorts of uh, things. Here's a tree out in the field. And if I put that on the rule of thirds line, and then you're gonna see the line in the middle of the, the photograph between the green and the gold, making a perfect uh, composure shot for a landscape photo. So there's so many things out here that you can um, use as your focal point in this particular setting. And you can use the lines to lead the eye. I'm going to move this over out here. Here's the image that I was using earlier. And if I put that tree right on the focal line, you're going to see the line where the gold and the green make a line leads right up to the tree and so that is going to be a pleasing photograph. If I wanted to get the tractor I could do the same thing about right here would be good. Now also remember and I can't do this because this camera's on a tripod but um, get down low. Um, remember you might want to put more of the focus on what's in front of you than um, in the foreground the green than in the background. Now as far as the landscape, here I'm going to show you right here is uh, where the horizon, as far as the horizon, the horizon is on the upper third line and it mostly focuses on what's in the foreground or I could raise it up here if I had a lot of great clouds and put the focus more on what's in the clouds. And so you have lots of, rather than just centering that horizon right here, it's better to be here here. And so now you got a few composure techniques along with your settings in your camera. Okay, and so that was with my um, digital SLR and you saw the combine there <laughs> that came along. Oh, timing is the key. So I'm going to click here to open up the other video for my um, uh, point and shoot camera and it's a very short video like just a minute and a half because there's not a whole lot to say um, for the point and shoot because you're just reviewing the preset mode and I'm trying to get this video to come up it may have techie issues and here it comes Okay, here we are with the um, point and shoot camera, and I have put it on the landscape mode. This particular one shows uh, the landscape under the scene mode, and then I scroll through till I found the little mountains. You can see it says vivid shooting landscapes, vivid reproduction of blues and greens. So this camera actually also has the uh, preset mode for some filters to make the blues and greens in landscape photos um, even uh, more vivid. And so here, I, I love this, how I have my graph on here, and I can take this and just put that tree right there on the cross of the um, graph and take the photo. And, you know, that's about it. <laughs> the, there isn't much more. The uh, Taking the photo and lining it up, I'm trying to see if there's some other good ones. Um, here, this one gets more of the sky. And putting the horizon.
eyes in on the lower half and taking the photo. I have a lot of silhouettes in it that way. I want to show you something else. I'm going to move this uh, camcorder, so follow along with me. And if I came over here, and I actually took some photos over here, you can see I have some grass in the foreground. So moving to where you have something in the foreground also is going to give your photos a little bit of depth and um, that's about it. Oh my, do you see all those uh, <laughs> fingerprints all over the back of my camera where I had touched it, the screen, um, showing things in these videos. Um, hopefully there you have learned more about landscape photography. I do want to mention as a final closing, um, d just because you can go to a really small aperture, small hole, large number, doesn't mean you have to go all the way um, as low as you can go. We're going to learn that in a future uh, lesson and why that is because um, I can't cover everything in every lesson and so um, we uh, uh, need to get out there and find you a good landscape and come share your photos and tell us uh, what makes some good landscape photo. Have fun!